Hello everyone, this is Presony Button, back in Unity, for another part. My voice, it may sound a little bit hoarse just because I've been recording for a little bit. But anyway, let's jump straight into it. Last time we covered animation, and we covered how to actually animate our character. So we have an idle animation, and we should have a run animation for our character. And we smoothed those out and made them look all nice and pretty and things like that. And we're going to see what we're actually going to do with these animations because it's nice having them, but we're not making a movie or anything like that. We want to interact with these things. We want to make a video game. And so you can see I have the animator over here. So I've just gone to this animator tab. If you've forgotten or if you don't have the animator open, you can just go to window, then animator. I also have my character selected, which is the important thing because this is the animator for my character and we can see it's entire it's tied there in the inspector somewhere there we go there's our animator all right so i have my idle animation here and i have my run animation and what i need to do and what we're going to cover is how do we tell unity when to run our animations how do we make our animations operate in, at an appropriate time or an appropriate condition and the lovely thing about the animator window in Unity is we have these things called parameters. So these parameters come in all different shapes and sizes, but we're going to be focusing on three parameters for our animation. One that's going to help us to move horizontally, one that's going to help us to move vertically, and one that's going to identify if we're on the ground or not. When I say help us move, it's not actually going to be the engine, the running force for our movement, but it's actually going to measure and it's going to tell Unity when we need to run our run animation, when we need to run our jump animation. And that goes the same for our ground parameter, telling us when we're on the ground, when we're not on the ground. This is a lot of information and it's going to continue to be a lot of information because we're going to go into mono develop. Mono develop is where we can make scripts, is where we can code our game together. And so to do this, we want to work a little bit on the line of organization. You can see I'm a bit less organized over here. But what I did do is create a scripts folder and I should show you how to make a scripts folder. So you go to your projects tab right here, you go to create and then folder. And then you can name your folder whatever you want. I'll double click on my folder. My folder already contains my player movement script. And this script is what we'll open up in a second. To create a script, while I'm in my script folder, I'll just go create sheet C sharp script. And then my C sharp script should appear there. And I can rename it by just slow clicking, slow double clicking. And then I'll just double click it to open the script. So here is our glorious script. And this script is a little complicated. It's a little deep, but I'll just describe what it actually does. So first and foremost, this script allows us to run and it allows us to jump. So we're able to have horizontal movement because of this script and we're able to have vertical movement because of this script. This script also tells us when that vertical movement should and can happen. And that's only when we're grounded. So when we are colliding with an object that counts as ground. To do this, we're gonna work with layers. To identify what the ground is, we'll be working with layers, but I'm not gonna go too deep right now. This script also references the animator and it says, look, you're gonna animate when these parameters are met which will allow us to later in Unity say, look, you're going to animate when these parameters are met. When these conditions happen, you need to animate in this specific way, which we have set up. And I guess this is pretty much this script wrapped up. We have some features in this script that allow us to flip our animation in terms of facing left and facing right, instead of having to animate a complete new animation just for facing left and facing right so this is the script that we'll be working with and I'll return to unity and I'll show you how you can attach that script to your character and it's very simple so I've just left click dragged over to my character and I have placed it into my character 
And so we see this player movement script is now a component of my character. Okay, so we have a couple of things that we need to identify in our script. So we have our max speed, which is 10. We have a public transform, which is ground check, which is an object we'll make in a second. We have a layer mask to identify which layers count as ground. And we have something called jump force and we're going to adjust our jump force because I know we'll have baby hops from such a small jump force. First things first, we'll go to create and create an empty game object. Now this object will be called ground check. And this ground check object will be attached to our character. And then we'll attach a label so we can actually see where ground check is because right now we can't see where ground check is. So I'm going to click on this box here, select a label, anyone will do. And then I'm gonna set this to origin. And it's gonna set itself to origin in relation to our character. You can see I've got some arrows here. Maybe you don't have them by default, but to get these arrows, all you gotta do is just click on there with your object selected and you can just adjust the position of your object. You can also do it in the inspector as you've seen me do before, but I'm gonna put it at minus 0.8. There we go, so we have our ground check there. And I'll just go back to the inspector for my character and just drag ground check into there. So that is our transform, that is where ground check is going to be. It's going to check for the ground at our feet and it's going to tell us are we grounded or are we not are we in contact with something that counts as ground or are we not going back to our character we're going to talk about this layer mask here ground identifier so if you look at my character he is on the player layer and that's because i made a player layer before i'm going to set it back to default so to add a layer you simply hit add layer off of that drop down and you can you know use any one of these boxes and create a new layer I'll go back to my character and I'll put them on the player layer and I'm going to say yes change children also so now ground check is also on the player layer then for my ground identifier I'll go to everything on the drop down and I'll be like psych everything except from player. So everything except from player is now identified as being the ground. So this platform, because it's not on the player layer, it is now the ground. And we don't really have anything else. So this is the ground. Great, let's move on to setting the conditions for our animations to actually run. So we see on entry, our idle animation is going to run. That's just going to happen. In the animator, we can set some parameters, which I've spoken about. First parameter is a float, and we're going to call that speed. And this is typed exactly as it is in the script. So as you can see, we have speed here, we have vSpeed, and we have ground. I'll just add those all in at the same time. I'm just gonna show you how you can really set this up. This is more of setup uh, than really development because this isn't something we wanna go too deep on because there's so much more of the game that we still have to make. And so I have speed, V speed and ground and those all correlate to what I said in the script. So our horizontal speed is being measured right now because of the script which we've made. And because of that, I can say when my horizontal speed reaches a certain point, well, I want my running animation to play. So I've left clicked, right clicked, and made transition arrows. And I'm gonna say on this first transition arrow, under the conditions, hit plus, when my speed is greater than 0.1, I want you to play the running animation when my speed is less than 0.1 I want you to play the idle animation and we'll go back to the idle animation so that pretty much sorts out our running 
now usually I'd just be able to start the game and then we'd look at our running animation feel real good about ourselves pat each other on the back and everything like that but not going to do that right now because there's still things that we need to implement now that our running animation is pretty much sorted out we want to work on our jump animation and I'm going to walk through how we're going to create our animations step by step because this is a bit different so we'll go to the animation window once we have our game object selected and I'm going to hit create new clip I'm gonna call this jump one or J1 place it in my animations folder and then I'm gonna do the same thing three more times going up a unit each time right so now we have some empty animations and we're gonna add some things to them I'm going to adjust that sample size to 24 as we are and wanting to do I'm going to take our frames of animation for our jump and I'm just gonna put them in here so this is our first frame and it goes to J1 our second frame J2 our third frame J3 and our fourth frame J4 I'm gonna go back and work on those samples wonderful and if we go to the animator we can see that it's quite nicely placed our animations in there for us automatically but we didn't want but we didn't ask for that so we'll delete them instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend these animations together so I'm gonna right click go to create state and then from new blend tree and this blend tree will just help us to mold all of those animations together and I'll just demonstrate how that works because I think a demonstration will be better than just words we see the current parameter is set as speed and just so you know I double clicked to enter this blend tree so we don't want our parameter to be set as speed we want our parameter to be set as V speed our vertical speed we want it to measure our up and down up and down movement and then here we see it says motion and we add a motion field and we do that four times over so for as many frames as we have we add a new motion field I'm gonna hit minus 12 for this and I'm gonna hit about 5 for this then the next step is to take our animations go to the animations folder if I open it up there go back to our blend tree so if we need to go back to our blend tree in the inspector we just click on our blend tree in the animator window then I'll open this up click blend tree again and then I'll take J1 I'll put it at the bottom J2 is the second animation J3 is the third J4 is the fourth animation so maybe you can get an idea of how this is gonna work out or how this is gonna play out what's gonna happen upon hitting a vertical speed of 5 our first animation is gonna play upon hitting a vertical speed of 0.6 our second and then our third and then our fourth in relation to where these thresholds are and so we'll have more of an arc with our animation instead of just our animation playing out and this is good because it actually means no matter where we are it's going to play the animation in relation to the physics or the forces that are acting on us so if I'm falling it's not gonna start off with my first animation it's gonna probably start off with my third and then my fourth animation or maybe my second third and fourth animation and it's gonna look a bit more natural and my animation won't just start playing out 
once we've hit the ground. So we've set our parameters within the blend tree and we want to tie this all together. So we're going to make a transition from our any state. So from any state, this can happen. So it doesn't matter if I'm running, if I start to fall, then we're going to go into this animation. If I start to jump just from the ground, then we're going to go into this animation. I'll make another transition from my blend tree to my idle animation. And this is where we use our ground check. Now our ground check is sitting here, it's a boolean. So it's going to say true or false. Are we on the ground or are we not? And we already identified that everything that isn't on the player layer is ground. So once I make contact with this, hopefully it's going to say, okay, we're on the ground. So you can hit spacebar and I'll play the animation for as long as we are not on the ground. But as soon as we hit the ground, then the animation stops. Now we want to actually tell Unity that we want that to happen. So I'm going to go to the conditions over here. And instead of going to speed and V speed, I'm going to go to ground. And I'm going to say when ground is false, I want you to play this. But we want to go back to our idle animation at some point. So when ground is true, I want you to play the idle animation. So when I'm not touching the ground from any state, for any reason, if I'm not touching the ground, then we're going to go into our jumping animation. But if I am touching the ground, we'll go into our idle animation, from which we can then go into our run animation. And we can ignore this little warning because past experience says it goes away. Now, before we test this out, I'm going to save us from a little comedy act. I'm gonna make sure that something doesn't happen when we actually move our character around. So as it is, as it stands, our character is gonna roll around like it thinks it's Sonic the Hedgehog just because it's blue. And we're not gonna allow that to happen. So we're gonna freeze the rotation along the Z axis. Make sure that in your rigid body 2D, you're using the body type dynamic stimulated and everything is as it should be now your gravity scale for you will be one and i've adjusted my gravity scale because i thought you know what about four about 4.5 is pretty good for me i can also change the jump force and i'll do that by trial and error and show you how you can do that by trial and error okay so i've fallen it's a bit interesting. You can actually see my, my character struggling to jump. They jump for about, I don't know, like a frame and then that's it. But our sideways movement is looking pretty good. Like I'm moving around and actually when we fell into the scene, we, we did go through a couple of frames of those animations. So I'm going to adjust my jump force. I'm going to make my jump force 700 and see what happens. So I click back in here, jump. I go up, I go down, I go up, I go down. I hit the ground, I go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Great. Looks like things are working out. If I'm in the air, that chin is playing regardless. I am not, you know, running sideways in the air. That jump animation is just playing. So from any state that I'm in, I go into my blend tree, which says that when I jump, I need to go through these frames of animation. I'm gonna just open my blend tree and show how that's actually working. So if I jump, you can see I flash through these frames of animation. I'm just quickly flashing through these frames of animation. And once ground becomes true, and it's saying ground is true, there's the boolean right there. Once ground becomes true, our animation stops. When it's false, our animation starts. And if I jump off the stage, you see, I didn't start from the frame. I actually started a little later into my animation. And so there we have it, everyone. That is it. That is sorted. We have our movement sorted. We have our jump animation. We have our sideways running animation. We have our character movement is sorted. And now we are ready to move into creating levels into having our character shoot into enemies and all these things because we finally figured out how we're going to move our character around how our character is going to interact with the environment just a little side note that i'd like to add 
you saw that I adjusted my jump force as we were playing. I'm going to readjust that here because it resets itself once we leave the game mode. If I've changed it in the game mode, it's not going to stay permanently. So if I start up my game again, we're going to see that my jump force is indeed now 700. And so we're jumping just as we did before. And we can play around with this a little bit. We can add some more platforms and things. So I'll just control C, control V myself a new platform. Put a platform there. Let's make, you know what? I'm gonna make this platform along the X axis, scale it up. Let's make Battlefield from Smash, shall we? Control C, Control V, drag that along there. It might not work out just because our character can't really jump too well. We'll just have to make some adjustments on the gravity acting on our character and the jump force, but okay. So we get up on things. See, we drop instead of jumping into a thing. So we jump, we drop, we jump, we drop, we jump, we drop. Well, that's been exciting. And that's been really fun to work on. So in future parts, as I said, we will be working on shooting. We'll be working on all the other aspects of our run and gun game. I hope you found this useful because I found it useful. I've got a couple of ideas of how things might work uh, in terms of animations and speeds and things like that. One example is you have different phases of running speeds in certain games. Maybe your character will have one running animation to another as they get faster and faster and faster. And now I see how that can kind of work. So I hope you've found for yourself some things that you can pull away from this project and take into other projects and even continue into this project. But thank you so much for being here, for listening for this long time. I will be back with another tutorial, with another part, and I will be back with another project pretty soon. That has been a tutorial on player movement. If you liked it, then be sure to leave a like, tell a friend who may want to get into games design, who knows. If you want to leave a comment, then you can most certainly do so. Either way, you're going to hear from me shortly.